Hi everybody, I'm Miss Sester, the Family and Consumer Science Teacher at the Middle School. This is Mrs. Vermilia, sister of Miss Sesser. I teach Earth and Space Science at the Middle School, but I'm going to be the assistant chef here today. As you can see, we are Team Gryffindor, and today we are showing you how to make just a basic muffin recipe to kickstart our muffin madness. So I'm just gonna recap the ingredients. We will run through the directions, which is always important to read through those directions first before you get started so you have an idea of what you need to do to make basic muffins. So our dry tea, which I'll be handling, we've got our flour, our sugar, our salt, and our leavening agent today is baking powder. And this is Millie's going to share it, the wet tea. Uh, for the wet ingredients, we have two eggs, we have milk, as well as vegetable oil. All right, so I'm gonna start off with our dry ingredients. So for those of you that are new to the kitchen, um, you need to know that when we measure flour, we don't wanna pack it down in our measuring cup because then the flour uh, will get packed and we'll end up with too much flour. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of run through the directions for you. Uh, the very first step is to measure out your dry ingredients. Uh, then you're going to add them to a separate bowl. Um, Mrs. Vermilio will be measuring out the wet ingredients afterwards and adding them to a smaller bowl. Make sure that you preheat your oven during this time so it's ready to rock as you are preparing your muffin batter. After we got our ingredients all measured out, we're going to add the wet to the dry and mix just until incorporated. Um, then we'll be talking about some add-ins that you'll be able to add to your muffins. You got an assortment today. Uh, you'll be ready to rock in no time. So as you can see, I'm spooning out this flour just with a dinner spoon. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. In a perfect world, Mrs. Vermilia would have uh, tins or bins like we have in our family and consumer science classroom so you don't get this flour everywhere, but we will make two. Now how much flour are you measuring out there? I'm measuring out two and a fourth cup. So I just got two cups and I'm going to break out our fourth of a cup. So you can also see that I'm leveling off the flour as soon as I get a generous amount in the cup, I take just the back flat edge of a dinner butter knife and I level it off so we get the perfect amount in our bowl. Next we're going to move on to our sugar. With our sugar, we are measuring three fourths of a cup. So in order to get the most accurate measurement, you want to snag your half cup and your one fourth cup because our ideal world, we are only going to dip into the sugar bag the least amount of times as possible. So that would be one half cup and a fourth cup. A lot of you may want to just do three one fourth cup, simple math, that's three fourths, but you want to try to limit the amount of time you're dipping in this sugar to get the most accurate measurement. And I'm going to snag my leveler Again, to level off the sugar, trying to get the excess back into the bag. So that's our half cup, and then our one fourth. Now, I've heard, Miss Sesser, that in baking, um, there's no real use for eyeballing measurements. Is that true? That is true. Baking, what we're doing today, is a science. You need to make sure that you are carefully measuring your ingredients. Um, too much or too little of one ingredient is going to throw off your muffins. Um, basically, for example, our baking powder is our leavening agent today. This is what makes our muffins rise because it releases the carbon dioxide gas, our CO2. So you want to make sure that you are using one tablespoon. One tablespoon, TBSP, is the abbreviation, is a lot bigger than one <laughs> teaspoon. So you're going to want to make sure you grab your tablespoon baking powder, something um, that I love about baking powder. It has a natural leveler right on top. So you can just use that to level out your tablespoon so we get the perfect amount. And into the bowl it goes. Our last dry ingredient is salt. So salt, um, 
in this specific muffin recipe, it's just to round out the flavor. So we're using three fourths of a teaspoon. So again, like the sugar, you're going to want to pull your half a teaspoon and your one fourth a teaspoon to get the most accurate measurement. So I never want to measure salt or anything of the sort. It's right over the bowl, why? Uh, you know, sometimes the salt just gets a little carried away and can come flowing out a little faster right. than anticipated. Just like that. You see? So, you don't want salty muffins. <laughs> no, salty muffins are definitely a no, no go. When we measure salt, I try to measure it over something, whether that's a small tin can or a already used measuring cup to catch any salt so it doesn't make a big mess on our countertop. All right, so I'm gonna snap the whisk. I like to use a whisk to mix up dry ingredients because whenever I use a wooden spoon, some flour always inevitably jumps out of the bowl. And I find that a whisk does a really nice job incorporating uh, flour, sugar, baking powder, salt together without creating a huge mess. And we are good with our dry. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start the wet ingredients then. Um, so I'm actually gonna start out with my two eggs. I have them in a separate bowl here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and crack those and then actually whisk them in this bowl before adding them to our wet ingredient bowl. As Mrs. Romilia is cracking her eggs, uh, I'm just going to show you our add-ins for today. We are doing blueberry and we are also doing chocolate chip muffins. So chocolate chip semi-sweet, um, what I would recommend if you are opting for chocolate chip muffins. However, if you don't have these on hand, look at your pantry. We had some Hershey bars left over from um, earlier. I think this was from the summer when we were making more seasons. More season never ends. These are still good to go. So actually I'm gonna crack these up and roughly chop them with the knife um, and we'll be adding those to our muffins today. So Mrs. Romilia is a pro at cracking eggs. So she did not get any eggshells into her batter. But did you know if an eggshell happens to fall in the mix, the best way to get out those little shards is to use the shell itself. It's going to get scooped right up. If you try to use your hand, you're going to just kind of chase it around the bowl. All right, so I have my two eggs in here all whisked up. I'm now gonna go ahead and move on to my half a cup of vegetable oil. Uh, now to do this properly, you should be using a wet ingredient uh, Pyrex uh, measuring cup. Do liquid not, measure or liquid cup. measuring cup, sorry. Do not use your dry measuring cups when measuring liquids. Um, does not give you an accurate measurement there. Right. And you're gonna notice as Mrs. Romilia is measuring it out, she's going to get at eye level because our measurement is going to look a little different when we're at an aerial view, that means up top, compared to when we're at eye level view. So always go for the eye level so we get the most accurate read with our Pyrex. And those of you that had me in science class know that we do the same thing when we look at a graduated cylinder, always getting down at eye level. Baking is a science, boys and girls, so you wanna make sure that you have the accurate measurement. So we end up with our ideal final product. All right, so I got my half a cup of vegetable oil and now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my three fourths cup of milk. Yes. All right, you got your I got my wet ingredients, two eggs, half a cup of vegetable oil, three fourths cup of milk, all incorporated. Perfect, so Alrighty. we are ready for our muffin method. Um, and this involves creating a well with your dry ingredients. So a little hole in the center of your bowl, and you're going to add your wet to the dry. Before we do that though, because we are using blueberries, I'm actually going to give Mrs. Vermilia um, a little bit of my dry ingredients for her blueberries, because this will help the blueberries not sink to the bottom of your muffin tin. So honestly, I just kind of eyeball this here. We just want enough to coat our berries. So you can go ahead and mix those up, lightly mix them. We also reserved a few blueberries to top. You don't want to put flour on the toppers because they will not look too great. They'll be covered in flour when they come out of the oven. And we want a nice clean berry to top our muffins. Why are you doing this again? Why are you putting flour in here? We put flour in there because the blueberries will sit to the bottom of your muffin if you don't lightly dust them in flour. All right. And 
With our muffin method, you want to mix just until our ingredients are incorporated. If you over mix this, the batter will become a lot thinner and runny, and we want a nice thick batter. So you can see, I'm just mixing until I no longer see any raw bits of flour. Since we are doing half, half of our muffins, blueberry, half of our muffins, chocolate chip, I'm going to give Mrs. Romilia over here some of her batter so she can mix up her blueberries. And we're gonna try our best to perfectly divide this in half so we get six chocolate chip, six blueberries. Go ahead and add your right. blueberries. I'm gonna add my chocolate. We're going to reserve some chocolate to top my muffin as well. It kind of gives it that nice Starbucks finish. All right, and I am ready to rock. So we're going to pull over our muffin tin. And if you do not have these muffin liners, no worries. You can grab some non-stick cooking spray. If you don't have non-stick cooking spray, you can grab just a little bit of butter and lightly grease the inside of your muffin tin. The best way to go about putting our batter into our muffin tins is just by grabbing a dinner spoon. Sometimes I like to use a cookie scooper or an ice cream scooper as well, but if you don't have that on hand, you could just use a dinner spoon. I'm actually gonna use this. All right, so let's have at it. So if you end up making a mess here, you just wanna make sure that your tin, the top of your tin is clean before you put it in the oven, and that will just help with cleanup. You won't get any burnt batter on the sides. Now roughly how much are you filling these up here, Miss Esther? About three quarters, three fourths of the way filled. The yield for this recipe, the yield tells us how much we are making is 12. So we want to get 12 muffins. No more and hopefully no less. All right. I think I'm good here. Mine all look pretty filled there. All right, that looks good. Let's start wrapping those. This is really so I call them now. Okay, okay. So it's Yes, yeah, so if you want to top them now, it's the time to do it, not after you bake. We could add a little bit of lemon zest to the blueberries. We talked about maybe doing that, Mr. Yeah. Granilia, next time. So, and some kitchen safety. Make sure that you are using pot holders to put this into the oven. Our oven's really hot, 400 degrees it is extremely hot. You want to be careful that we are uh, not going to burn our hands when we slide in our muffin tin. So, Mrs. Oh Vanilla, you got this. She's going to put on pot, pot holders. And in these go for 18 minutes. All right, so 18 minutes have gone by. We actually had to stick these in there for about an extra minute. So we're looking at 19 minutes total cook time. Mrs. Vanilla is going to check to make sure our largest muffin is cooked all the way. If that is cooked all the way, then certainly the rest of them are good to work. And if that toothpick comes out clean, which it does, they are nice and cooked. Uh, we're gonna let these sit in this muffin tin tray for about three-ish minutes. Um, they'll finish kind of setting up and then it'll be cool enough for us to pop them out. So I like to just use a butter knife and carefully slip it in and pop them out as you are doing that. Make sure that you have a cooling rack ready for them to finish on cooling. Uh, if they sit flat on the counter, then this starts to get a little soggy. We challenge you to create or make your favorite muffin recipe and share it with me. More details will be on the web page and a picture if you so choose. So until next time, see you later. See you later.